Hello everyone! Before we proceed with our topic, let me introduce my song first. I am Ryan Basalo Anton. I am currently teaching at the Talangas and Tugarit School, Kisoy Junior High School Extension, City of Kisoy, the Talangas, Alabel, Sarangani Province. The institution is one of the farthest schools of the Pet Sarangani Division. I can describe myself as a sympathetic, uh, approachable, and eager person. Sympathetic because I am very sensitive to others' emotions. Approachable because I am easy to deal with. And also, I am a cool person. I am eager person as well because I am willing to try something new for learning. November is my birth month and I also love uh, to watch TV special news. I also love watching movies and I love playing billiards. And aside from that, um, singing and dancing are also my And today, I am talking to you about the needs assessment. What is a needs assessment? A needs assessment determines what programs and services your community needs. It is to determine gaps and unmet needs and to improve the service delivery in your community. Why is it a needs assessment important? This assessment is an essential part of the planning process when designing successful community initiatives. It is also provides planners with the information needed to prioritize goals according to identified needs. The needs assessment determines what needs exist in the community. The problem of course in the community. As we all know, that problems are usually symptoms of something else. So, what is that something else? We should find out. Next, what group or who needs the services? Or, the participants of the service delivery system. Then next, another needs assessment determines what other programs and services already exist to address the problem. The chances are, that a good deal of information about the community already exists. Resources, it is important to make sure whatever data exists in is timely and available to address a particular need or risk. Number four, how the user community is changing. Your target may be people whose behavior or circumstances need to change. And you may recruit agents of change to work with you in your effort. Number five, whether resources are adequate. Gathering of information on the problems or needs in your community, then identify existing resources that address these needs. Steps in assessing needs. So, what are the steps in the needs assessment? The four steps in the needs assessment the process required that you determine who will conduct the study, what kind of information needs to be collected, how the information will be collected, and how the information will be used. The following should be included in the needs assessment process. First is an overview of the community. People within the community come from different backgrounds, have a unique cultures, customs, and values. Utilizing this wide range and wisdom is critical to assessing the community needs and strategizing areas for improvement. Before you conduct a needs assessment, you should have a clear understanding of the different cultural groups within a community. Next, a profile of the population you intend to serve, and that is the target or your target population. The next, a risk profile of the target population that includes information on risk factors. For example, for HIV infection, substance abuse, and all related problems. And the next, data on the current trends of the HIV or AIDS epidemic in your community, especially HIV transmission and new HIV infections. For example, local data on relevant risk behaviors such as use of alcohol and other drugs, use of injection drugs, 
prevalence of sexually transmitted diseases and use of condoms. Other data related to safer sex practices. Other local epidemiological data related to HIV transmission. Next, an assessment of resiliency and protective factors. Include information and individual protective factors, family protective factors, and community protective factors. Although, the conceptualization of resilience significantly varied from study to study, protective factors associated with resilience at individual, familial, and societal level reduce the likelihood of negative consequences of the risk or the problem. Negative consequences can be prevented or moderated if protective factors are provided in time. Next, current capacity of local service providers. You should examine or determine whose services are already available in your community. Next, unmet needs. Identify the gaps in community services that you intend to fill in. So you have to fill in the gaps. The next, relevant services needed by your target population. Identify other services needed by your target population, such as transportation, educational, vocational, employment services, and child care. Before performing a needs assessment, you must decide who will conduct the study. A needs assessment study can be carried out by outside consultants and volunteers. Available resources, your time frame, and your comfort level. The performing research may influence your decision. Outside consultants have expertise in conducting research studies. They provide objectivity in the needs assessment process by offering an outsider's view. Since consultants are experienced at performing research, this option can make better use of limited time. The primary disadvantage of using outside consultants is the cost. Consultants are your most expensive option. Next, using volunteers from the community is another possibility. Volunteers don't cost anything. However, one of the disadvantages in using volunteers to help with needs assessment are that they may present a biased interpretation of what the community needs. Thus, it is important to select volunteers who reflect a broad cross-section of the community. In addition, it may be difficult to find volunteers who are willing to devote their time to this process and who have previous experience in this type of research. You need to weigh the pros and cons for each method and decide which will be the most effective approach for your organization. Often, budget is the major factor restricting your choices. It may be a good idea to use a combination of these methods. For example, you might hire a consultant to help you set up the needs assessment study, but then use volunteers to actually implement the study. Dividing the responsibilities in creative ways may help you in performing a cost-effective needs assessment. A needs assessment helps you identify the extent of type of existing problems in the community, the services available, and the unmet needs. In even simpler terms, a needs assessment is a process to determine the need which can be defined as the gap between the problem and the efforts, resources, and the programs that exist to deal with the need. You must also decide what hope to learn about your community and what kind of information you plan to collect. For example, 
Do you hope to perform a broad-based study or one is focused on your problem? Some of the categories of information you may be interested in collecting include historical development. Historical development is to help you understand how the community became what it is today and to provide insight into the kinds of resources you need to collect and those that you need to win out. Next, another category is geographical and transportation information. Geographical and transportation information is to help you understand your community's growth patterns and population distribution. Another category is demographic data. Demographic data is to help you recognize which groups make up the population of your community. Identify population distribution changes and collect information such as age, characteristics, size, race, and the transients of the population. Next, another category is economic data. Economic data is to help you identify your community's economic base. And last but not least category of information to collect, social, cultural, educational, and recreational organization. The social, cultural, educational, and recreational organization is to help you determine your community's values and social patterns. And now, let's proceed to the ways on how to conduct the needs assessment, choosing the approach. Number one, community forums and hearings. Community forums and hearings a means of collecting information about the needs of the community through a series of public meetings. They may rely on information from both key informants and people in the general population. And of course, this approach has advantages and disadvantages. So the advantages of this approach are easy to arrange, less expensive approach, educates attendees, describes needs to public to obtain validation, allows citizen input, data easily available at low cost. But of course, this approach has also disadvantages. The disadvantages of this are attendees may not represent the population in need of services. Attendees perception of need may be incorrect, can turn into a gripe session, and can raise expectations too high. There's an old saying that when someone has a hammer, everything begins to look like a nail. So, to be sure we are really using the best technique for each problem and situation, we have to spend some time thinking about our reasons for the needs assessment, the questions we are asking, and the current trends in our community. Community forums and or public hearings may be the best choice to facilitate community input. They are an excellent way to involve the community in the needs assessment process and to make sure people understand and believe the results of the needs assessment. Community forums can be particularly useful when a community has become polarized into opposing groups because public hearings and community forums make people believe something is going to happen. You need to be sure something really does happen. Another approach on how to conduct a needs assessment is social indicators. Social indicators is an approach to data collection that relies on inferences, estimates, or need drawn from descriptive data found in public records and reports such as crime statistics, employment, 
poverty indicators and health status. So the, the advantages of this as approach are vast existing data pools, low cost, flexible design, foundation on which to build other needs assessment. And of course, the disadvantages of this approach are must verify with other evidence that need really exists. Data are only indirect measures of need. Personal or class bias of researchers can be introduced. Few indicator series have been developed, therefore, specialized staff skills are required to create them. Okay, another approach is service provider survey. Service provider survey is a survey of those who actually provide services to the population in your community. So the advantages of this approach are provides information on problems or service needs which may not be widely recognized validates information on existing community resources and helps develop an, an overview of existing problems and simple and inexpensive. And of course, the disadvantages of this service provider services approach are problems identified may reflect cultural or class biases of providers rather than real problems. Data may reflect needs only of those already being served. And on last but not the least, it needs identified may reflect vested interests of providers. And another approach on how to conduct needs assessment is Key Informant Survey this K-Informant Survey is a research activity that seeks information from those who are not participants in the service delivery system but who represent and speak for various constituencies in the community such as clergymen, elected officials, advisory or advisory group members, and commissioners. And of course, the advantages of this key informant survey approach are provide for simple and expensive input of many well-placed individuals. Another, it identifies problems that can become public issues and receive widespread exposure. Another, it indicates programs likely to be supported or opposed by community leaders. In last but not least advantage, it highlights issues of importance to vocal and active segment of community. The disadvantages are the identification of problems may stem from political or personal sensitivity. Another may exclude some leaders who should have been included. And last but not the least, may exclude parts of community having no access to leader. And last but not the least approach on how to conduct the needs assessment is survey. Survey is a research technique based on a collection of data from a sample or the entire population of a community. This approach is designed to obtain information from respondents about their needs. The advantages of this approach are most scientifically valid and reliable approach, most direct way to learn the information and needs of individuals, expands way to obtain information found through other techniques, and last but not the least advantage, it is flexible cost and time frame depending on whether general or target population is surveyed. The disadvantages of this approach are most expensive approach. Individuals chosen may be reluctant to respond. 
requires extreme care in selecting a sample, requires specialized research skills, can require greatest amount of time, and also choice of methods, person to person, mail, telephone, must be clear and applicable to your community.